Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting from the UK into your homes. And what you'll find is that I usually talk about news items or highlighted items and I give my take on it. So if it's the first time you're visiting my channel and you like what I talk about, please subscribe, like and share. And for my existing subscribers, thank you as always for your support, for your comments and for your interaction. Now today's topic is about sickle cell anemia or sickle cell trait or just sickle cell. It affects predominantly black people. Not exclusively, but predominantly black people, people from African Caribbean descent, people from Middle Middle um, where from Middle Eastern, um, the Mediterranean, and Asia. And you'll find that well, I know in my lifetime I've known about two to three people that have had sickle cell. Um, one of them was when I was going to school. I didn't really understand. She used to say she was in a lot of pain. Um, she'd go in hibernation for about a week. And we wouldn't really, as a, somebody who doesn't have sickle cell, you cannot understand or even imagine what they go through when they have a sickle cell crisis. Um, another man that I met through one of my um, relationship forums, this was about three or four years ago, maybe a little bit longer, he actually bought a house near the hospital so that he didn't have to keep calling because he was afraid that he'd get the cry, um, the boy who cried wolf syndrome and they would just ignore him. So the most times when he felt it coming on, he would make his way either by taxi or by walking to the hospital. Anyway, one time it was so serious, he called the ambulance and the ambulance took about 30 minutes to arrive at his door. And by the time they got there, he was dead by the front door. So it can kill you. I mean, you can get organ failure, you can get stroke. Apparently, the pain is so severe that, you know, people actually admit themselves into hospital to have morphine to deal with it. That's how bad it is. And uh, I'm going to explain what causes it, the background. Um, they have got some cures, in quote, but because they haven't been tested on too many people, they don't really want to call it a cure just yet. So I'm going to cover those little things. I'm going to read from my notes because it's not a subject I'm proficient in. It's something I've, I've kind of looked into because I think it's important because it does affect the majority of black people. And I think it's important that not only black people know about it, but white people. Because you know what happens in schools when a child has sickle cell and the teacher doesn't know about anything about it. You know, they can get penalised for not attending certain classes. Apparently, if they overexert, it can trigger a, um, a crisis. So, and when, you know, um, when they take time off work, sometimes it can take between 24 hours and a week for them to come out of that crisis period. And if an employer doesn't understand sickle cell, that, that um, employee could be penalised. So it is about raising awareness and not, you know, and not taking, you know, not judging people because of their behaviour and what you do not know about. So I am trying to raise awareness through this video for employees, for colleagues, for friends, you know, and they call it the silent disease because people who have sickle cell anemia they don't even want to talk about it they just go into hibernation you might not know why your friend disappears and they 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 usually try to deal with the pain themselves so it's really it's really quite sad and it's when the red blood cells they they um actually if two if if two parents um have sickle cell it's 25% more than likely that the child would have the trait. So, but it's where the red um, blood cells, they have a very strange shape and they're not as healthy as the normal blood cells and they block the oxygen and they try to force their way through. And you can imagine funny shaped um, or distorted shaped um, cells trying to get through an otherwise um, channel 
that is supposed to be made for smooth entry. You can imagine how painful that must be. And it can start from your from your feet and go right up to your to your chest. Anyway, um, so sickle cell disease, first of all, it's not exclusively affecting um, people from African Caribbean. So even though I put in the title um, the disease that affects black people, it does affect people of colour. So Middle Eastern, Eastern Mediterranean and Asian backgrounds. Um, sickle cell disease is a serious and lifelong health condition that predominantly affects people from African and Caribbean backgrounds. Um, but the bone marrow transplant, also known as the stem cells transplant, offers the only potential cure at the moment. But I'm going to tell you about another alleged cure later on in this video. But at the moment, um, offers the only potential cure for sickle cell anemia. It's usually reserved for people younger than the age 16 because the risks increase for people older than 16. Um, with the national median life expectancy of 42 to 47 years, people with sickle cell disease face many challenges, including severe pain, strokes, organ failure, and complications that result in reduced life expectancy. That reminds me, I don't even, I haven't heard from my friend for a while. I don't even know if she's still alive, to be honest. Um, some consider it a silent illness as those who have the condition rarely speak about it or the pain that they live with, which is what I said a few minutes ago. Um, information released this month, which is October, at the time I'm doing this video, reported that Janelle Stevenson, 28, who was born with sickle cell disease, recovered after receiving genetic treatment as part of the NIH clinical trial that scientists claim might hold the key to the cure of this disease. But like I said, they don't really want to do too much about it because they've only trialled it on one person at, at the time that I'm reading this. Apparently, CBS 60 Minutes External Link reported on Stevenson's condition before receiving the bone marrow transplant in November 2017. The details of the trial external link and her life in the last 15 months. The segment featured interviews with NIH researcher John Tisdale, MD, the trial's principal investigator, and Francis S. Collins, MD, PhD, Director of the NIH. Um, Janelle Stephen says, in quotes, I'm feeling amazing after the treatment, but it has been a year of adjustment for sure. Stevenson said, I have been testing my body's new limits and really exploring my level of physical fitness. The clinical trial external link, which is still recruiting participants, is testing a novel gene replacement therapy in people with severe sickle cell disease. Preliminary findings suggest that the approach has an acceptable level of safety and might help patients consistently produce normal red blood cells instead of the sickle-shaped ones that mark this painful, life-threatening disease. So that is good news. It really is. Anything that's going to do something about it is good news. The experimental treatment involves removing hematopoietic stem cells from the patient's bone marrow or blood and adding a therapeutic beta-globin gene which is defective in people with sickle cell disease. The cells are then returned to the patients, leading to the production of anti-sickling hemoglobin, in brackets T87Q. Sounds very technical, but I'm reading it because I think it's important. Um, based on preliminary findings, which were presented at the latest meeting of the American Society of Hematology, 
Researchers believe that the new gene replacement therapy will enable the patient's bone marrow to produce normal red blood cells consistently, which is excellent. People interested in participating should contact the Office of Patient Recruitment by phone. And of course, this is in America. I don't know if you need to be an American citizen. I don't know what the deal is, but it's worth inquiring. Um, the number is 1-800-411-1222. That's 1-800-411-1222. Or email prpl at cc.nih.govmail. And then it says two, but I wasn't sure if the two was joined. So it's probably best to call. Now, what is sickle cell? Sickle cell is a lifelong and serious inherited condition which can only be passed on to a child if both parents are carriers, having what is called a sickle cell trait. If both parents are affected, there is a 25% chance that the child will have the condition. According to the NHS, sickle cell disease is the most common serious inherited genetic disorder in England, affecting 2,000 births. That's a lot. People with the disease produce unusually shaped red blood cells which don't live as long as healthy blood cells and so can become stuck in the blood vessels. Painful episodes of sickle cell can sometimes be prevented by wrapping up warm and drinking plenty of fluid and daily antibiotics can, resist, can reduce the risk of infection. Nowadays, stem cell or bone marrow transplants can potentially cure sickle cell disease, but the treatment itself comes with serious risks, so they, these are only used in severe cases. Bone marrow donation is done under general or regional anesthesia, so the donor experiences no pain during the donation procedure. Discomfort and side effects after the donation vary from person to person. The myth that stem cell or bone marrow donation is a painful is extremely common, and worryingly, it often stops people from registering to donate. 90% of people now donate directly from the bloodstream in a procedure known as peripheral blood stem cell donation, PBSC. I heard that it was painful, but apparently it really depends on the person and, you know, you get a bit of soreness afterwards from the bar bone marrow site, but it's probably best to speak to somebody who's actually done it. The most serious risk associated with donated bone marrow involves the use and effects of anaesthesia during surgery. After surgery, you might feel tired or weak and have trouble walking for a few days. The area where the bone marrow was taken might feel a bit sore for a few days. So for saving somebody's life or to, you know, if you can prevent somebody going through this painful episode, it is, um, you know, a few days of discomfort, you know, if it can, in, you know, if it can stop someone having weeks and years and lifelong pain, you know, it's not too much to ask, is it? Generally, better awareness of the disease makes it easier to live with and allows people to support those who have it better. Nadine Eaton head of blood donation campaigns for NHS blood and transplant said people with sickle cell disease have a much better outlook than in the 1960s, including, including, I don't know what that is, thanks to treatment with regular blood transfusions. So they have to have regular blood transfusions. Can you imagine? But she added, we particularly need more black people to donate blood. Most sickle cell patients are black and donors from the same ethnic background are more likely to have matching blood. Tinchi Snyder, the rapper, donated blood to raise awareness. I'm not quite sure what year that was. Um, sickle cell symptoms. Some people are born with sickle cell disease, experience problems with 
from early childhood, but many have few symptoms and lead normal lives. When they occur, sickle cell episodes are very painful, can last up to a week and are often referred to as crisis. Those with the condition are at increased risk of this serious of of serious infections. They can also experience anemia, which occurs when red blood cells can't carry enough oxygen around the blood around the body, causing tiredness and shortness of breath. This is also called sickle cell anemia. In serious cases, people can experience delayed growth, strokes, and lung problems. Some people are in hospital every month to alleviate the excruciating pain with morphine and it can last from 24 hours to a week. It appears to get worse as the patient gets older. Common sickle cell crisis triggers called, in other words, in what, what causes, um, you might ask what is causing sickle cell crisis, what are the triggers? A sudden change in temperature like when it gets cold or too hot which can make the blood vessels narrow. Um, very strenuous or excessive exercise due to shortage of oxygen, sorry. Dehydration due to low blood volume. Sickle cell is just as serious as cystic fibrosis and should be treated with the same caution, suggesting that as with cystic fibrosis, people should get tested before starting a family. Personally, I wouldn't want my child to be put through that, but some parents, they're not tested and they don't realise that because they haven't had any symptoms, they don't get tested themselves and then they have a child and the child has it and that child is subject to pain for the rest of their lives. Can you imagine watching your, your child go through pain like that for up to a week and there's nothing you can do about it? apart from take them to the hospital or get them, or they have to take morphine. There is a lack of knowledge and they're not aware of the genetic makeup of the condition as the parent. While lots of people with sickle cell can maintain a healthy lifestyle, it's still important to get tested. Sickle cell carriers won't develop sickle cell disease but are at risk of having a child with a condition if their partner is also a carrier. <clears throat> you can request blood tests to check if you carry sickle cell from your GP or nearest sickle cell and thalassemia centre. But good news, another piece of good news, um, a French teenager sickle cell disease has been reversed using a pioneering treatment to change his DNA. The world first procedure at Necker Children's Hospital in Paris offers hope to millions of people with the blood disorder. Scientists altered the genetic instructions in his bone marrow so it made healthy red blood cells. So far, the therapy has worked for 15 months and the child is no longer on any medication. The teenager who received the treatment had so much internal damage he needed to have his spleen removed and his hips replaced. Every month he had to go to the hospital to have blood transfusion to do, dilute his defective blood. But when he was 13, doctors at the Necker Children's Hospital in Paris did something unique. Doctors removed his bone marrow, the part of the body that makes blood. They then genetically altered it in a lab to compensate for the defect in his DNA that caused the disease. Sickle cell is caused by a typo in the instructions for making the protein haemoglobin, which is densely packed into red blood cells. A virus was used to infect the bone marrow with new correct instructions. The corrected bone marrow was then put back into the patient. The result in the New England Journal of Medicine showed the teenager has been making normal blood since the procedure 15 months ago. tell you something you know we say scientists fast and why people fast and why people 
dig up, do this, and then, you know, do this kind of investigation, that kind of analysis, and this kind of research. But when it heals, when it's able to heal, it's fantastic. It's only when it's used for the negative, it's a problem. But if it's used for positive outcomes. Philippe Lebouche, a professor of medicine at the University of Paris, told the BBC News website, so far, the patient has no signs of the disease, no pain, no hospitalisation. He no longer requires a transfusion, so we are quite pleased with that. But of course, we need to perform the same therapy in many patients to feel confident that it is robust enough to propose it as mainstream therapy. Prof. Labouche is nervous about using the word cure, as this is just the first patient to come through clinical trials. But the study does show the potential power of the gene therapy to transform the lives of people with sickle cell. I think it's very significant, essential they've given him his life back, said Dr. Deborah Gill from the Gene Medicine Research Group at the University of Oxford. She told the BBC, I've worked in gene therapy for a long time and we make small steps and know there's years more work. But here you have someone who has received gene therapy and has complete clinical remission. That's a huge step forward. Makes me all warm inside. However, the expensive procedure can only be carried out in cutting edge hospitals and laboratories, while most sickle cell patients are in Africa and the Caribbean, of course. The next big challenge will be to transform this pioneering science into something that really can help millions of people. New research suggests that the history of sickle cell disease goes back to the mutation in just one person, a development researchers hope will make treatment less complicated for the many people who suffer from the painful illness. So um, they have traced it, but I'm not sure if it matters. How much longer is it? I guess you can put up with another three minutes. I'm sure that's how long it would take to read how um, the history of sickle cell. Okay, now new research search, new research suggests that the history of sickle cell disease go back to the mutation in just one person. A development researchers hope will make treatment less complicated for many people who suffer from the painful illness. The story of sickle cell disease, first and foremost, a study is how good things can come bad with different consequences. A story. Once upon a time, in what is now the Sahara Desert, a child was born with heightened immunity to malaria. Important because at the time, this part of Africa was wet and rainy and covered with forest. It was a great habitat for mosquitoes, which carry malaria, a disease that these days kills one child every two minutes. With a better chance against an illness that was a major killer than as now, this child with the, sorry, this child with the genetic mutation lived and had children and those children sped out all, boys, all bolstered with extra defences against malaria and living for longer and their descendants around the world still have those extra defendants, descent, sorry, extra defences today, more than 250 generations later. But here's where the bad consequences come in. If both your parents have that gene mutation, you can end up with sickle cell disease, which brings severe pain and other complications to its patients. People who inherit the gene from both parents do not have its protection against malaria. In the American Journal of Human Genetics, Daniel Schreiner and Charles Rotimi from the Center for research on genomics and global health presented findings from analysing the genomes of nearly 3,000 people, 156 of whom had sickle cell. 
The researchers say they traced the mutation back for 7,300 years and found it started with just one child. Why does this matter? Because it helps with the classification, Dr. Ritimi says. He tells the BBC that it will give doctors a better understanding of how to classify sickle patients in terms of the disease severity. For decades, scientists have wondered whether the mutation happened just once or whether it happened at different times in different places. Sickle cell were first found in the US in people of African origin, but they were also common in people from Eastern Mediterranean, particularly Greece, the Middle East and parts of Asia. Up until now, he says, we've been labelling these various types using ethnolinguistic groups, which really does not provide any clinical insight. Those are just where the patient was first noted, Dr. Ritimi says. In awareness raising video on Facebook, Salome has sickle cell disease and needs regular blood transfusions. But she wouldn't be alive today if it wasn't for the unsung heroes like Zam Zam. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.